Mined from the depths of the conflicting and obscure lore of the fourth edition lies a fascinating yet mostly forgotten tale. An alternative origin and history of celestial angels, infernal devils, and the formation of the Nine Hells. A mighty fortress city forged by the heavens, an impressive bulwark of holy light against the descending darkness led by the Lord of Lies in a century-long siege. A story of righteous good, the purest form of evil, and the last remnant of a deposed god known only as He Who Was, awash in the darkness of the Astral Sea, and all within the World Axis cosmology. The story of Mal Harak, the Last Bastion, right now on Riches and Liches. We are tribal by nature. It's built into our very DNA. It's part of the human success story. No one is without bias. And I am no different. Most of my audience is well aware of my own prejudice against the fourth edition. Yet I can think of no better example of a good story that is ruined only by its direct conflict with established lore than the tale I'm about to share with you today, which then serves to feed into that bias. So I offer this story as nothing more, a story, a fiction, free of any need for reconciliation. And I believe in that context, you too will find this a fascinating tale of good versus evil. Existing in what 4th edition scholars call Hell's Archipelago are the Outer Torments. These large bodies of land float in the Astral Sea and orbit around the dominion or plane of Beator, as would so many moons travel around their home planet. Each of these orbiting bodies is its own dominion, not directly under the influence of Beator, aka the Nine Hells, but in close enough proximity that Hell's influence is certainly present at some level. There are five known outer torments that serve as borderlands to the Hells. But today's story centers on just one, the smallest, called Malharak. And this is the story of Malharak, the last loyal holdout of Beator's now deposed, defeated, and nameless master, known today only as He Who Was. The celestial realm of Malharak shone brightly amidst the swirling evil of the Astral Sea. Its ivory towers and golden domes glowed with divine radiance, a beacon of hope standing stalwart against the darkness of what we would call today the Lower Plains. Within the hallowed halls of that citadel, armored angels trained for battle, their swords ringing out as they dueled, showering the air with their prismatic brilliance. Others sat in quiet meditation, communing with a divine essence that permeated every inch of this celestial fortress while scholarly seraphs pored over ancient tomes in the divine library, seeking wisdom both arcane and divine. An air of purpose, duty, and devotion filled this sprawling city. In the central tower, a legendary tome archon named Raziel sat in contemplation as his exarch, an astral diva named Evanshir, entered the room. The exarch's feathered wings fluttered nervously behind her graceful, angelic form. My lord, our scouts report the infernal forces of Asmodeus amassing along the borders of Malharak. His armies grow stronger by the day. I fear open war is imminent. Raziel nodded sagely, his radiantly handsome features creasing into concern. Then we must prepare, rally the garrisons, fortify the walls, bless our soldiers, and send messengers to the heavens. If the fallen Dark Angel seeks to test our strength, we shall meet him with divine fury. It will be done, my lord. As the Exarch departed to carry out her orders, Raziel turned his gaze to the view beyond the tower. In the distance, he could see with his angelic eyes the hellish hordes gathering, their malice poisoning the celestial air. The Dark Lord's infernal crusade was coming, but the celestial fortress was built for this, its very walls imbued with divine wards of holy protection against such evils. No, Malharak would not fall easily. Over the coming weeks, Evan Shear oversaw the realm's defenses. Walls were bolstered with additional holy wards, armories overflowed with blessed weapons, and the city's garrisons swelled with angelic soldiers. 
Veteran legions arrived from allied realms across the multiverse and the celestial heavens to embolden their ranks. Within the divine walls, companies of solars, planetars, and divas prepared for the coming holy war. Finally, the inevitable came to pass. The dark infernal armies of the nine hells surged forth, a tide of fire and brimstone, claws and fangs, dark and infernal magic, all clashed upon Malharok's divinely warded gates. Pit fiends battered the walls with hellfire siege engines, while all manner of winged fiends from Spinagons to Irenes darkened the skies. Razael, riding high upon Timperion, his magnificent celestial charger, strode to the front gates, holy avenger in hand. You cannot breach these walls, betrayer. Return to your blasphemous hollow, for Malharak and the heavens stand eternal against your godless sin. The attacking fiends sneered and howled in hate-filled contempt, but the Lord of the Ruby Rod only smiled. The battle had just begun. Yet with the passage of time, the war continued to rage for what fills a lifetime for many a mortal. Wave after wave of devils crashed against the besieged bulwark, but time and again they were repelled, truly confounding and trying the ever-patient Asmodeus. Evanshir and Raziel coordinated the Celestial City's defenses masterfully, ensuring Malharok's holy wards never faltered. The angels fought with a zealous fervor, sending countless fiends back to the hells. No longer counted in years or even decades, Malharok protected the divine and the mortal alike against the infernal forces of Asmodeus as the century turned. Entire generations of mortal beings within Malharok's protective walls were born into this eternal siege until such time that the citizenry, servitors, and even the clergy had only known this war. Raziel and Evanshir, knowing that even the diminished godlike powers of Asmodeus when outside his sovereign realm of Beator, were still far too advanced for any one angel, archon, or even the mighty celestial wards infused into the very construction of Malharak's walls, they had still devised a brilliant strategy that had successfully held the devilish onslaught at bay, protecting the shining city as the calendars mark a new century. Channeling the celestial energies of the central prismatic spire of Malharak, which still held vast divine power as the seat of the now deposed god known only as He Who Was, Raziel coordinated a constant, vigilant rotation of continual prayer and meditation among dozens of powerful angels channeling their own divine energy. These combined and empowered holy wards allowed Malharak to maintain its holy barriers in the face of the infernal darkness impregnable to even the Lord of Hell himself. In time, and despite previously failed attempts at subterfuge and sabotage, Asmodeus was able to identify a potential weakness. One celestial whose own doubts left an opening. This beautiful but conflicted young diva named Sarah Bellos was of little renown, but harbored many of the same warmongering and demonic hating tendencies as a fiery solar angel named Zeriel who would herself much later become the archdevil ruler of Avernus. Asmodeus was able to reach the discontented diva to exploit her zeal, promising greater power and purpose if she aided him. With dulcet but deceitful words from his silver tongue, the Lord of Lies boasted of the hells and not the heavens as the proper guardians against chaos. Asmodeus had, as always, delivered a compelling and convincing argument that had swayed the young diva to consider his offer. Asmodeus, being unfamiliar with the layout of the great fortress city and its ward stifling his own diminished powers outside his own hellish domain, only required Cerebellos to provide the location and logistical details for Raziel and his group of communing angels. Cerebellos maintained some reservation as she could not be responsible for dooming the souls of her angelic kin. However, Asmodeus, a supreme negotiator who had convinced the very gods to bend to his will, knew this bargain was struck. To seal the pact with Cerebellos, Asmodeus promised he would spare any angels that surrendered, allowing them to return to the heavens, a small price for such a prize as Malharak. But as always when dealing in infernal Faustian packs, 
the devil is truly in the details, with no mention made of the mortal clerics, citizens, and servitors that made up the bulk of Malharak's population behind its walls, this angelic oversight, if successful, would yield the Nine Hells with a full legion of new infernal souls, along with ownership of one of the greatest fortress cities in the multiverse. In the end, Asmodeus had swayed the young diva to reveal Malharak's secrets bribing her with promises of both increased power and station as a fallen angel Irenes of Beator, where she could lead an entire company into the blood war and truly strike at the heart of chaos. Having secured enough information from Cerebellos to both target a relatively accurate greater teleport and now having the knowledge of the most opportune time to strike, the Lord of the Nine instructed a group of eight Dogai assassin devils on their task and sent them into the seat of Malharak. The Lord of Nessus held little hope they alone would be able to defeat what he learned might be as many as two dozen of the most powerful praying angels. However, all he needed was enough of a distraction, knowing his own powers were strong enough to break the godly wards once their concentration was shattered. Thanks to the information provided by Cerebellos, the teleported cadre of assassin devils were able to silently infiltrate the meditation chamber where 18 angels were in communion with their celestial gods, augmenting the city's own holy wards. More critically than the reduced numbers was the fact that Raziel, the Tome Archon, was not there, as he and his exarch, Evanshir, were coordinating other strategies in another part of the city. Raziel's presence would have made quick work of the assassin devils and risked providing any window by which Asmodeus could breach these holy wards. The meditation chamber, pristine and filled with harmonious celestial energy and tones, stood in stark contrast to the encroaching yet unseen darkness. Eight silent Dogai assassin devils materialized not far from the inner sanctum, their presence a malevolent intrusion upon the angels now deep in prayer. Using their shadow step ability, the assassins vanished, unseen as they unsheathed their sinister blades. The praying angels were oblivious to the approaching evil. Masters of infiltration and shadows, the assassins blended seamlessly into the sanctum's dimly lit corners. With deadly precision, they advanced in absolute unison and silence, every step a whisper on the hollowed ground. With sudden and ferocious coordinated strikes, the battle erupted in a storm of violence. The devils launched their surprise attack, their movements sinuous and unnatural, like shadows given deadly form. The angels, taken unawares, reacted with delayed shock, but their innate divine power still surging to their aid. Blades clashed and the air crackled with the opposing energies, the truest form of good versus evil. The devils' red eyes burned with hate as they sought to extinguish the celestial light that the angels embodied. Shaken from their meditation, the Celestials fought back with ethereal weapons forged from their own divine essence. This inner sanctum of Malharak now transformed into a battlefield, the serene energy now twisted and intertwined with sinister evil. The gleaming walls now bore scars from the furious exchanges, and the sanctum resonated with the clash of opposing forces. The devils, despite their mastery of shadow and stealth, found themselves facing formidable opponents. While fortunate that only a single solar was among the meditating diva angels, and though initially caught off guard, the inevitable outcome was decided before the first strike. This was a one-way mission, something the assassins and the Lord of the Ninth were all too aware of. In mere minutes, the tide of battle turned against the infernal assassins. Overmatched and outnumbered, they fell one by one, their dark forms crumbling into dust as they were vanquished by the divine might of the angels. The final devil, wounded and cornered, let out a haunting <laughs> laugh just before meeting his own demise. It was in that sinister taunt the angels realized their victory was hollow. For even in defeat, the assassin devils had succeeded in their sinister intent. Their grim intrusion had disrupted the angels' concentration causing a not insignificant decrease in the power of the protective wards that had shielded Malharak these 100 years. And in that vulnerable instant, 
Asmodeus, lurking on the fringes of the celestial domain, seized his opportunity. With his dark powers, he shattered the now weakened wards, unleashing a torrent of dark energy upon the city. A corrosive, obsidian mist descended, blotting out the celestial sky. The infernal legions of hell, over 5,000 strong, cascaded wave after wave upon Malharak like an encroaching rolling fog of cruelty and malice. Their forms, tainted with darkness, obscured the very stars above as they poured forth with an unrelenting fury. The great fortress city of Malharak, the final bastion against the tides of hell, now stood on the precipice of annihilation. Nearly one century to the day, the great walls of Malharak were breached. Fiends flooded the streets and pandemonium erupted. Angels dueled furiously with devils as buildings burned around them. Solar angels dispatched pit fiends three, four, even five to one, but all combatants this day knew the war was soon over. Evanshire rallied her soldiers for a last stand before the prismatic central tower but her forces were soon overpowered and cut down by a retinue of Aranese. Raziel strode forth to face the invaders. Know this, Dark Lord, even as your blight spreads, we stand unbroken. The heavens may weep at your corruption this day, but they shall never yield to your dominion. Surrounded and outnumbered, Raziel and an injured Evanshir fought on, but they knew Malharak's fate was now sealed. Overwhelmed, the remaining defenders fell one by one before the endless devil hordes. Evanshir looked deeply into the eyes of Raziel, knowing she would gladly die with him in defense of the city if that was his wish. But there were others to think of, including the mortal servitors who had not the luxury of divinity. The Tom Archon had unleashed pure desperate fury, destroying dozens of attackers with divine strikes. Then, upon seeing Evanshir's glance, knew the fight was over. With a knowing nod to his exarch, Raziel lowered his weapon and announced to the evil invaders that to spare the good left alive, he would yield the great fortress city. In that moment, a silence fell as if time itself had stopped. Asmodeus strode forward in the bloody wake of his devastation to claim his prize. His eyes gleaming with sinister amusement, he gazed upon Raziel and his exarch Evanshir, who had fought by his side. His reply was laced with a chilling tone. I am not without mercy, Raziel. Your angels served you well. You and the tattered remains of your defeated, once mighty celestial legion may leave. Their lives, your lives, have been bought and paid for, and a true Batazu always keeps his packs and promises. Raziel's eyes widened in both horror and realization. The ominous words of Asmodeus held a single sinister truth. That betrayal from within his own ranks had allowed the Lord of Hell to breach the city's walls. As Asmodeus shared a wicked smile, a dark figure stepped forth from behind the towering fiend, her form already bearing the signs of infernal corruption. It was Cerebellos. Once an angelic diva of pure light and grace, her once feathery white wings had become stained with inky blackness, and her once angelic beauty had taken on the inherent, diabolic features of the Batazu. Raziel, his expression a mix of shock, anguish, and betrayal, could only muster a hoarse, weak whisper. Zarabellos, how could you? How could you betray everything we once stood for? Cerebello spoke, her voice tinged with a strange harmony of sorrow, empowerment, and malevolence. I grow tired of the heavenly rhetoric, Archon. The heavens have grown stagnant. The blood war rages on and I refuse to be a passive observer any longer. Asmodeus's call to action is my answer. The Supreme Lord of the Nine, reveling in the treachery he had wrought, leaned in closer to Raziel, his voice dripping with malevolence. Ah, the sweet scent of betrayal and realization. Do not blame her, Raziel. She simply made the pragmatic choice. But you, mighty Tomarkon, you should reflect upon the clouded view of your divine yet idle mandate 
For in the face of chaos, the heavens crumbled, and I offered Cerebellos a chance for greater purpose. An easy decision in the end. And now Malharak is mine, and your celestial reign is but a fading memory. As the sinister words of Asmodeus trailed off, the Dark Lord of Hell waved a clawed hand, never taking his eyes off Raziel as a divine portal opened. Raziel stood, taking Ebenshear's hand. And what of our mortal subjects within the city? The Archon asked. Asmodeus replied coldly. They have a choice. Swear eternal fealty to me, and I will allow them to witness Malharak's new destiny. Refuse, and their souls will power the city's rebuild. Either way, they are forever bound to Malharak. Bloodied and beaten, Raziel knew he had no better options for them. His lowered head nodding in silent agreement and defeat. Asmodeus turned to his pit fiend generals. Infernal legions, occupy my new prize. Reforge and restore it, worthy of our noble cause. Howling in victory, the devils spread throughout Malharak, defiling its sacred halls with their vile presence. Where angels once walked, now stalked Barbazoo and Hamachula devils, gathering the mortal citizens while Irenes roosted in the empty towers overlooking the activities. Raziel could only watch helplessly as what was left of his celestial forces disappeared into the portal. He witnessed the evil of the Nine Hells permeate this once bright bastion. Malharak's formidable defenses had finally cracked before the endless tides of sin. The shining jewel in a sea of darkness had fallen into wicked hands. Do not despair, Tomarkon. This was an inevitability, the only possible outcome. Consider it the passing of an ineffective era, but Malharak shall soon see a new dawn. One forged in the lawful destruction of chaos, or your virtuous light and lack of will have only failed. Raziel, ensuring what remained of his forces had departed safely, then turned to look upon Evanshear. Giving his loyal ex-Arca a knowing nod, she wore a look of concern for the Archon. Yet obedient to the end, with a weak smile, she too disappeared within. The last celestial in the city... Raziel himself turned for the portal, but Asmodeus placed his clawed hand on the Archon's shoulder, halting him. Then, glancing upon his holy vestments, reveling in the opportunity to further humiliate the Archon. Strip away your celestial trinkets, Raziel. Drop them upon this hallowed ground. Let them forever memorialize your defeat and mark my gracious mercy upon your soul. Raziel's expression remained stoic, but his eyes revealed his inner turmoil. He knew the weight of his defeat, and it was a heavy burden to bear. With a solemn resolve, he began to remove his celestial-empowered breastplate, letting it drop with a resounding clang. As the armor rested at his feet, it seemed to echo the loss of hope within the Archon's heart. Raziel's shimmering Holy Avenger, a blade that once blazed with the heat of heaven's flame, slipped from his grasp, its fire doused by the triumphant darkness. In the final act of humiliation, the Tomarkon tore off his celestial symbol, the mighty bear adorned to his holy garb, and watched as it fell silently into the blood-caked dust of the streets. Asmodeus watched with a sinister grin, savoring the intoxication of the mighty Archon's defeat and newfound vulnerability. <laughs> Mere trinkets now, Razio. Worthless relics of a bygone era. In a final act of defiance, the still-proud Archon met the Prince of Evil's gaze with an enduring, divine determination. Hear me clearly, Dark Lord. Even in the depths of the infernal darkness of a failed and fallen angel, the celestial light shall ever endure. Neither you nor your unclean hordes will extinguish the spark of the good and the righteous. We will meet again. The Sovereign Lord of the Nine Hells glared into the very soul of Raziel, his tone now dripping with a cold hatred, 
battling against the strict lawful nature of his promise to Cerebellos. Take the portal, Archon. There will not be another. My mercy is not without its limits. As Razael turned toward the dark portal that would lead him away from the fallen city of Malharak, he carried with him the weight of his defeat, but also the flicker of hope that the celestial light would shine again, even in the darkest of places. And that is the story of Mal Harak. I've personally learned a valuable lesson today. There clearly exist epic stories that I have discarded or simply ignored, an act of judging a tale by its cover. Stories that can be shaped and molded as we see fit, and which I believe will yield many new tales for us to share in the future. But what did you think of the fall of Mal Harak? I love reading your feedback and all your opinions. If you'd like to support the channel and keep the content sponsor free, please check out the links below. Free Patreon memberships, free Discord access, and buy me a coffee donation link. And if you think I earned it, please like and subscribe. And if you're a regular and haven't subscribed, at least tell me why, so perhaps I can do better and earn your sub in the future. Thanks for listening, and until next time, remember, the only limitation at your table is your imagination.